Wonderful. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much for joining us on this lovely Tuesday afternoon. I'm Chanel Bitker, food writer with the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, thank you for supporting us, supporting local journalism, and being interested in supporting our local food system. Um, this series of events we're doing is a partnership with Quesa. They put on the renowned Ferry Plaza Farmers Market. Um, and we've been checking in with a lot of the really incredible vendors there. And today we have Aruna Lee, uh, the founder of Volcano Kimchi in San Francisco. Hi, Aruna. Hi, Daniel. Hi, everyone. Um, Aruna, thank you so much for making time for us today. And I'm so excited to learn more about kimchi from you. Um, but first, for people who maybe aren't as familiar, um, I know you were born in South Korea and grew up in a Buddhist monastery. Um, how did that influence the way you look at food? Uh, when I was six, I was adopted by a Buddhist monk. And ever since then, I grew up in a uh, uh, remote mountains in uh, Korea. Um, so everything you grow, you know, right outside in the temple and you harvest and you make a food, lots of fermented stuff, pickers and kimchi. And so when I moved here, I uh, missed that kind of flavors like clean and fresh and uh, that's uh, why I started the volcano kimchi. Yeah and why did you come to the Bay Area? Uh, good question. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> I was curious and I um, so after uh, finished high school and I uh, shaved my head and I uh, went to seminary school. And after that, I uh, stayed uh, six years in Zen monastery in uh, different parts of Korea. Uh, and uh, I went to uh, India traveling uh, for a year and um, I met uh, my husband and <laughs> he was born and raised in San Francisco. Uh, I, when I came here, I didn't know whether we gonna marry or, uh, but we had to marry after three months, otherwise they're gonna kick me out. <laughs> so uh, here I am, I've been here uh, almost 20 years and wow. I'm, I'm very uh, grateful to live a uh, city uh, like San Francisco, so diverse culture and lots of different kinds of food. And uh, I'm uh, very happy to live in San Francisco. That's a long story for short. <laughs> <laughs> a fascinating story though. And um, I think your words really describe your kimchi so perfectly. It's really fresh, crisp kimchi. Um, when did you start at the farmer's market? It was 2016 uh, winter. They had a winter pop-up available and I uh, joined the farmer's market. And ever since then, I've been in a uh, Kesa Farmers Market, and that really changed my uh, uh, the way I make a kimchi, and uh, you know, creative way to uh, make a kimchi because you see all different kind of vegetables in different season, and kimchi you can make with uh, any kind of vegetable, like a leafy vegetable or root vegetable. That's why I'm uh, showing you how to make the. Uh, um, different kind of roots to uh, make a kimchi. Uh, so the farmer's market is uh, inspiration uh, for me and to be more creative. Yeah, because uh, at Korean restaurants, which is probably where a lot of people most often find kimchi, um, it's almost always Napa cabbage kimchi, but there's so mm -hmm. many different kinds you can make. 
Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, cabbage is a traditional um, kimchi that you eat throughout uh, the year. Uh, but also in Korea, you know, you make all different kinds of kimchi, hundreds different kinds of kimchi and that we don't know. So I use the traditional technique, but using all locally sourced these beautiful vegetables that you can find at farmer's market. So I'm very excited to uh, introduce different uh, root vegetables and, you know, uh, where I source these uh, beautiful vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to do just one quick aside. Um, it's uh -huh. Lunar New Year starting this week. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if you could share what you like to make for the Lunar New Year and if kimchi goes with that dish. <laughs> Absolutely, kimchi goes well with any dish. <laughs> and uh, typically in uh, Lunar New Year, we make a uh, rice cake soup. Uh, you know, you uh, steam like a sticky rice and you pound in this uh, stone pot and then you make a long uh, strip of uh, uh, rice cake and then you dry a little bit and you slice and then you save that for New Year and make a soup uh, using uh, dashi broth and uh, that, and then maybe also families make uh, mandu, that's like Korean style dumpling. And some families, they make a kimchi dumpling. And uh, so it's just a way to have a family activity through food and share and commemorate your uh, ancestors. Mm, so I, I'm excited to make a dakguk. It's a rice cake soup. So as you said, kimchi, it's great with everything. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe right before we, we start the demo, um, mm -hmm. what exactly is kimchi? Kimchi is a fermented vegetable. And uh, as I said, you can uh, make, uh, you know, any kind of vegetable to make kimchi. And in Korea, uh, winter months, like November, end of November, we make a big batch of uh, kimchi to uh, have that throughout, you know, early spring. So lots of, uh, you know, preservative, you know, preserving uh, your vegetables to, you know, uh, have uh, uh, many long winter months. And I think it, Kimchi, originally they tried to use just uh, using uh, salt and vegetables. And when we got uh, chili pepper from uh, South America and we start to make uh, different types of uh, kimchi and uh, that's continued to uh, now. Mm. And why is it considered so healthy? Uh, People say kimchi has a lot of a probiotic <laughs> and that helps digest your, um, whatever you eat. And I think it's also just uh, tastes good. And when you have a, a few kimchi in your refrigerator, you can have an easy meal. You just need a bowl of rice or, uh, so um, I think it's a uh, flavor and uh, good for digestion and, uh, probiotic pro property it has. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Um, let's, yeah, how is it done? <laughs> mm. I wish I can see everyone and maybe some of you have some vegetables with you and make with me. Uh, if not, uh, you can follow recipe, but today I'm not exactly uh, you know, using recipe that I uh, shared with you. I just uh, cannot follow recipe. <laughs> but um, I want to introduce what kind of ingredient goes into make kimchi. So uh, this is a chili powder. So you can uh, buy from uh, Korean market or you can uh, dry your own pepper and uh, grind but for uh, when you make 
kimchi, you don't want to have a really finely ground uh, pepper. You want, you see a little core here. So you want to uh, use that kind of pepper. Um, and then I also use a little bit of a dried uh, bell pepper or you can use a fresh bell pepper, but sometimes you cannot find the fresh bell pepper. So I use uh, red bell pepper to sweeten my kimchi. So a lot of people uh, use sugar when you make kimchi, uh, but over time uh, making kimchi, I learned it's not necessary to add uh, additional sugar because uh, you know onion has uh, natural sugar or cabbage, other vegetables contains sugar or you can add some uh, fruit like a pear or apple. So, um, so I think you don't have to add additional sugar. The reason they add that to uh, help the fermentation process. Um, and another one I add, uh, since I make a vegan kimchi, I use this uh, shiitake mushroom uh, powder. Uh, Sometimes I buy dry shiitake mushroom from uh, far west fungi or local uh, mushroom uh, company and you can grind it your own if you want to have a fresh uh, mushroom. And also I use this kind of a kelp. You see how beautiful? And this uh, kelp has this uh, white uh, powder that has lots of umami and flavor. So you don't need to wash this. So just use it as it is. And uh, most important ingredients uh, uh, is salt. Using good uh, sun-dried salt uh, is uh, important when you brine your vegetables. So I use uh, uh, French gray sea salt uh, to brine um, vegetables. And then it goes into ginger, garlic, onion. And today I have this beautiful um, red uh, radish from everything under the sun farm. You can uh, find them at Ferry Plaza Farmers Market. And then we're gonna use a turnip and some Ruda Vega from Heirloom Organic. And I got this one from Eatwell Farm, this radish. Um, and you need a little green onion. And I love this. This is uh, when I make a kimchi, I always add some kind of uh, mustard. So this is a red Mizuna and this is green uh, mustard. But this red Mizuna, when you add into kimchi, it creates a beautiful pink and purplish color. Uh, looks delicious and tastes really good. It's slightly bitter. But when you ferment, uh, you don't taste uh, that bitterness, but it, it blends in like beautiful with the uh, kimchi sauce. Um, that's uh, pretty much I'm gonna use. I think that this uh, daikon radish uh, from local farm. Um, uh, so that's the ingredient I use and I wanna show you how to make a kimchi. Do you have any questions? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify some of the ingredients you're using. So the red pepper, that's gochugaru, right? Mm -hmm. Gochugaru. Huh? Yeah. So you can, people can find that in Korean markets. Mm -hmm. um, would it work with another red pepper? Yeah. You, you know, in summer months, you can find the red pepper, like even dried one or uh, fresh one, you can dry on your own. Uh, all star um, brie, what is the name of farm? <laughs> All star organic, yeah. They have a beautiful uh, pepper and tierra farm they also have. So you can use local uh, pepper and you can just grind on your own. Uh, I, what I learned, uh, you don't have to use only one kind of pepper. This is a serrano pepper. But you can add, uh, this is uh, from uh, ghost pepper. It's called uh, Shivate from uh, India. Uh, it's sourced by a uh, diaspora company. Mm. Um, it's uh, extremely spicy. And I made a batch of kimchi with this. It just gives a beautiful smoky flavor and spicy and uh, so delicious. And 
it's it's really nice to blend with different pepper uh and it creates a different like flavor so i recommend to blend some different peppers if you can cool. find and then um for the kelp one of our uh -huh. viewers was wondering is that kombu specifically yeah exactly it's a kombu great it's, uh, yeah it's a kombu you can find the local uh um uh, seaweed company uh, like Daybreaker or uh, you know yeah <laughs> yeah and then the French gray salt mm -hmm. obviously a very nice coarse salt would any coarse salt work here yeah you can use any kind of a sea salt you don't have to use a French gray sea salt just the, from the beginning I start to use and it gives really nice flavor and lots of minerals and good nutrients, you know, it contains. Uh, recently, I used this salt, uh, Marisal salt. Uh, they are a small company. They uh, source from uh, Pacific Ocean, like Mexico somewhere, and uh, it's beautiful salt you can use. It's uh, really important using uh, good salt. Uh, mm. So when you use uh, good salt, you don't have to use it too much. And you, um, like, for example, when you make a Napa cabbage kimchi, today we're making root uh, kimchi. But when you're using like a good organic ingredient, you can pre-rinse and use a little bit of salt and you can brine longer time. Then you don't have to rinse your cabbage or your vegetables. Uh, you can just use everything. Uh, so it, you don't waste uh, anything. Uh, that's part of, you know, zero waste. Um, so good start. Okay, great. Well, yeah. What comes next? Uh, yeah, and of course, I uh, after I came home making after making hundred pounds of uh, kimchi, <laughs> I brined the thirty minutes. Uh, I can show you what I made and how amazing have this uh, uh, brine already. But I want to show you um, how you can. Cut. You can cut any way uh, you want, just the uh, bite size. Uh, like that, and you can use uh, uh, turnip if you want. Or... So I made this kimchi uh, last fall. It was so delicious, and I thought I should make again. But unfortunately, in the recipe, it says uh, um, kolabi. Uh, but I couldn't find the kohlrabi at farmer's market. So I'm substituting with a different root vegetable. So which is fine, right? You can use any uh, root vegetable available at farmer's market and you can make kimchi. And so you can cut like this. And then just to show you <laughs> how you do. And just, uh, this is not supposed to go in there. And add uh, just a little bit of sprinkle, a uh, little salt, and you mix. And you wanna put heavy weight, so it uh, brine better. So I wanna show you in bigger part <laughs> that I pre-brine for limited time we have. And so I always have uh, this beautiful rug if I can find and I uh, grab <laughs> from somewhere. Uh, and then you leave it like this. And I want to show you how much it uh, didn't add any uh, water. But you see it extract, salt extract all this uh, uh, beautiful juice from radish. So this one I uh, brined about I guess 40 minutes after I came home, I uh, chopped and then put salt and uh, brined. So that's uh, all the vegetables you can brine about uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, depends on what kind of kimchi you make or what kind of vegetable you use. Like when you make Napa cabbage, it will take maybe uh, three hours, four hours or overnight. Uh, you can brine, but uh, root vegetable is so easy to make. It doesn't require long brine uh, time. So you can even like uh, 
don't have to brine if you don't have time. You can just uh, sort it quickly and then while it's brine, you can make a sauce and mix it together and it's done. So I want to show you what goes into you have a green onion. So when you have this uh, roots, don't throw away. You can uh, make a uh, vegetable, you know, stock and you can uh, use. And you can also dry them. And when you have a cold, you can make a tea with that. Um, and you can, can slice some green onion and we, you want to put green onion put aside and when you make um, uh, root kimchi just you it's better to buy with the uh, uh, greens uh, with so you can add this you can chop and add into your uh, kimchi later on and then uh, you can just uh, cut onion like this and you have a garlic, ginger, and we're gonna make a kimchi sauce right now. And I'm gonna show you briefly how you can do. So I already pre-cut. I'm gonna add pear, onion, ginger, garlic. So I add a little more garlic. Is it Asian pear specifically? Yeah, you can use any pear. Uh, it uh, also last time I made with the persimmon, just add whatever available in season and it's just so delicious. Okay. So it's better to use a food processor than a blender because it doesn't have to uh, make a, a puree. So it's done already, uh, very easy. If you use a food processor, and then uh, so I'm gonna put this here. <laughs> and then you want to add uh, here after you blend it, onion, ginger, garlic, and we're going to add some uh, pepper. Or you can do some of the uh, um, peppers. You can uh, add into here and uh, uh, let uh, radish absorb the color. So you can do that too. And then I'm going to add this uh, bell pepper and some uh, mushroom powder. And we can make, so it doesn't have to be so uh, much, you know, red or peppery, but I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Um... So just the use your senses. And uh, <laughs> if you wanna make a spicy, you can add some of like this kind of pepper or uh, you can add a jalapeno, habanero, all kinds. And then I'm gonna add uh, this very uh, important ingredient, uh, kelp, you can just add it like this. And then I have a uh, green onion here and a uh, radish top. And we can mix. Although you don't have to mix the green veggie in sauce, you can just add like this. We add some, uh, mustard and you can use your hand, tear some. And let me transfer this so you can see better. Okay. And then we're gonna mix with the sauce. And use your hand. You know, we uh, call sommat, which is hand taste. So when you make a kimchi, give lots of love and good energy and make a delicious kimchi. Look at this already, how easy. So I think every one of you now, you can make a kimchi at home, like this red, uh, root kimchi. Or you, look, isn't it pretty? 
It's beautiful. Look. Wow. And and then you can use a little bit of water or like a broth if you want. Like um, let me rinse this. If you want to add a little bit of um, I rinse my hand. <laughs> And you can add a tiny bit of uh, water, or if you want to have a more kimchi juice, you can add more uh, water into your uh, uh, kimchi mix like that. And who wants a sample? <laughs> <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> I wish I could. So is the kimchi done? It doesn't need to ferment more? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to ferment. Okay. Um, so I think uh, it needs a tiny bit more salt. You can uh, sprinkle and that. And then we, I want to show you how you add, uh, put into jar and ferment. So if you have uh, like a crock like this, you can also ferment at home. My friend Nancy, she made like this. Uh, <laughs> I put my gochujang. Um, and here, you can use any uh, mason jar or so you need a funnel and okay, let me see. You can do this. So when you pack kimchi, um, you don't want to uh, pack too much but you want to press down so it's submerged into a uh, juice. So today I used the, um, maybe three di different small uh, radishes and I made uh, like this much uh, kimchi um, in my household. We can finish this uh, one day, but <laughs> Okay, I think that's good. So if you uh, have a wide mouth, you can, uh, or if it's small, you can use a ziplock bag with the water, and then you can uh, um, put on top of kimchi. Then uh, it, when you uh, ferment, more juice will uh, come out of uh, veggies, and then uh, it helps to submerge into uh, your vegetables. And then. Um, this is the uh, beautiful kimchi we made. So <laughs> you were saying you could fill up a plastic bag with water. So that would that act yeah. as a weight? Yeah, that's like because uh, it's have a really narrow mouth. So it's hard to put like a little things there. Wait, if mm -hmm. you have a big pot or like or a uh, crop, you can put rock or, you know, uh, different things to uh, Way down. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it matter that you're using a glass? Um, like, does the light interfere with the kimchi at all? No, no. So that's why when you, uh, good question, uh, <laughs> you want to uh, leave under the sink or somewhere dark. You don't want like exposed in the sun. So you leave this uh, for maybe two days. Depends on uh, the temperature uh, you have. So like San Francisco, you can live uh, three days with a uh, root kimchi. Uh, it will ferment really nicely and you want to keep in the refrigerator and it will, uh, it will continuously ferment, but it slows down the fermentation process. Okay. Is and there you you can just eat like salad too. You can eat right away, but if you want to have a, that tangy, I think it tastes better. Uh, you wait a little bit. That's a part of a slow food, right? You wait. <laughs> Is there a risk at over fermenting? Yeah, some people tell me when they make a kimchi, they said, oh, I live for like, I left for three weeks two weeks in room temperature, uh, that's not very good because um, it, it loses texture, especially kimchi. When you make a sauerkraut, 
yes, you can because you're using very simple ingredients, just maybe salt and maybe a few spices. So that's okay to uh, ferment a longer time because it takes time to ferment. But kimchi, you're adding all different ingredients, ginger, onion, garlic. And so that helps the fermentation process faster. So uh, that's why kimchi, you want to ferment maybe uh, two, three days maximum. Mm. Is yeah. that the same for a traditional Napa cabbage kimchi? Yeah, yeah. Like also like summer months when people make kimchi, they uh, ferment only half day. Wow. And uh, yeah, so when I was traveling uh, India, I <laughs> missed the kimchi so much. So I uh, chopped cabbage and added some uh, uh, chili flakes and uh, put in a plastic bag and tied into it behind my backpack and it fermented in like a couple of hours because it's so hot. So um, it's just, uh, you know, it depends on where you live or. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our viewers was wondering about the water that you added. Uh -huh. Is the amount of water the determining factor for how much kimchi juice you end up with or that's yeah that's correct today i didn't add much but when i make a radish kimchi i actually want to add a little more uh juice because the kimchi juice is so delicious and you can have a kimchi shot or you can make a kimchi cocktail <laughs> different ways to use and also in korea like people um after they eat their meal, they drink a little bit of kimchi juice to uh, di help digest their uh, food. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I often see it in recipes also for uh -huh. kimchi fried rice or- Uh-huh, oh yeah. Stews. It's a very important ingredient people should not throw uh -huh. out. <laughs> yeah, never. <laughs> yeah, and um, Aruna, before we move on to the next thing you wanted uh -huh. to show us, um, uh -huh. One other viewer was wondering, where do you buy your French gray salt? Uh, you can buy at Rainbow Grocery and I uh, buy from SF Salt Company. They uh, directly import from France. Nice. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Okay, great. <laughs> well, Aruna, I know you also wanted to show us mm -hmm kimchi stew recipes so folks have some inspiration for what to do with oh. all the kimchi they're going to make. Yeah, I should heat up my uh, pot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kim like when you have a kimchi, really nothing to waste. Even you see little, like if you live like a year and you see uh, more that create on the top surface, you can just uh, remove that part, just like a cheese, right? When you see more, you know, in cheese, you don't just throw away, right? Um, but people get scared eating that, you know, if you see something, but you can, that's why keeping uh, the submerged into juice is important when you keep uh, kimchi. So I think it's good when you make at home, put in a, uh, like a, like this smaller jar, have a, you can have a many jar so you don't open and close. Once you open and close too often that uh, gets sour and lose flavor. And, but you know, then you can make a kimchi stew or kimchi fried rice, kimchi pancakes, so many things you can do. Uh, so today I just thought, you know, um, everybody loves uh, uh, kimchi tofu stew. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to make it. And if you have any questions. Yes, I am excited. It's one of my favorite dishes. Um, Yay. Two more questions to uh -huh. come in. One person's wondering if it's better to use bottled water versus tap water for kimchi. Oh, uh, I, I mean, if you can use bottled water, that's great. But uh, I think uh, from tap water, uh, it's uh, okay. If you, the area you live, uh, the water you think uh, it's better to be filtered, then I think it's good. Uh, but yeah. I think any, any, any water is okay. We're lucky our water's quite I good. I know, here. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you can, uh, you know, 
if you have a, like a nice, like this uh, ceramic pot, you can actually keep water overnight. Or like I keep my water with a, like a charcoal, they purify uh, you know, your uh, water. So that's one way to do when you, you know, drink or when you make kimchi or when you make mm. other dishes. Yeah. And then do you have to sterilize your jars before using them for kimchi? Yeah, that's uh, true. <laughs> you want to just wash in uh, with the soap and hot water and just dry and you can just use. You don't have to sanitize like when you make a beer or I don't think it's necessary. You can just uh, rinse the with the water and, you know, dry them and you can use. Because the kimchi, whatever it's in this the bacteria, they can kill <laughs> the unwanted bacteria. So I think it's okay. <laughs> Great. So I think my pot is uh, pretty hot. So, uh, and that's a gonna... beautiful pot. Can you tell us more about it? Oh, yeah, this one, you can use any, you know, uh, stainless pot and Le Cruze or this is a, you can find at Korean uh, market or when you go Korean uh, restaurant, they serve you soup in this pot, right? You can, they, they're all different sizes. You can have a, like a tiny ones like this. Sometimes I make uh, individual soup when I have uh, uh, friends over and, but this one, like, you know, Korea, they still do, but just so you share in from one pot. <laughs> so if you have a little big pot and I'm gonna add some of olive oil and you can mix with a little bit of sesame oil. And, and I'm gonna lightly start, oh, where did the, uh, my onion go? <laughs> <laughs> so our chop oh that's there it's over there yeah some onion here oh here I have onion and a little bit of garlic so I'm gonna add a little bit and you uh, stir when it's uh, uh, golden brown you you can skip this part too you can just uh, add oil and saute uh, Kimchi, if you go camping and you don't have all these veggies and you want to just, uh, um, and my kimchi, of course, this is, uh, so when you make a kimchi stew, you want to use uh, uh, nicely fermented. So this is like uh, fermented for three months. So it, it really wants to come out of a jar. So, oh. And, as you see, <laughs> and then um, you can add. I used about uh, half jar. Depends on how many people you serve, you can add the whole thing. So just a, I don't know other kimchi, but using um, the kimchi I make, uh, it doesn't need a lot of uh, seasoning. Uh, I normally add just oil and a uh, little veggie and uh, saute like this. So when I come home, this is my uh, go-to comfort food and because it's so easy to make and I always have kimchi in my refrigerator and you can just uh, saute and now I think it's nicely uh, sauteed. So this is, um, you can use your water, you can use any uh, vegetable stock or if you wanna have uh, you know chicken stock, that's fine too. And also if you, um, today I'm making vegan, but you can add uh, uh, different uh, meat if you like to add. And typically in Korea, I think they use uh, uh, pork. 
but uh, you don't have to add any meat. And today I'm making uh, using uh, tofu and this, this dashi I made. This is a shiitake mushroom and kelp. And I soaked for uh, an hour. And it's just, uh, you can also, um, after you make a dashi and you can chop this and then add into you know, different dishes. So this will be about a cup and a half. So and we this... have to wait until it uh, boil. So I want to uh, show you what kind of things you can add here. Let's cover and let it uh, boil. And this is a tofu from Hodo Foods. They, uh, you can find this uh, medium tofu at farmer's market. And you can uh, either slice or you can uh, tear with your hands. It's uh, um, either way, you know, or you can put whole thing in and as, uh, when you want to serve, you can add that too. Um, so let's see, we can maybe add now. It's not boiling yet. <laughs> so well, I'm going to do it this way. So. When you find the uh, soft tofu, you can uh, use that too, but it's not necessary. Not you know, it's not easy to find the, the Korean soft tofu um, in other market. Then you can just uh, use it like this. Use your hand and add some uh, tofu. If you're using a firm tofu, would you recommend um, pressing it first to get liquid yeah. out? Oh, I normally you keep in the water, right? So uh, I think it's okay. So I add some tofu, maybe half tofu, and let it boil. And meanwhile, I will just uh, prepare some garnish uh, to add on. How long do you recommend letting it simmer for? Just after it boils and uh, simmer for maybe another five minutes, you can oh, wow. uh, you can eat very simple. I make a kimchi uh, stew like in ten minutes, and you can you can just have a meal so easily. Yeah, that's really fast. Uh -huh. and I know you're using Napa cabbage kimchi here. Do you think kimchi stew would work with other vegetable kimchi's? Uh, you could like uh, I make uh, like bok choy kimchi, and you can use, but I think it's better to make a stew with a little bit of uh, uh, leafy vegetables like uh, napa cabbage kimchi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, while it's uh, uh, boiling, I want to show you what you can add. Um, you can add the. Uh, if you want like some soy sauce, I bought this from Korean market. This one uh, is a uh, fermented soy sauce that uh, it's not really dark and light flavor. So when you make a soup, you use this kind of uh, soy sauce. And, and then also I make my own uh, vegan fish sauce. <laughs> so I, I normally add this to give a boost that flavor. And if you want to have a little bit like a spicy uh, flavor, you can add a gochujang like this. Uh, this is a homemade gochujang. <laughs> Beautiful. And so, um, vegan fish sauce, that's such an unusual ingredient. Um, how do you... <laughs> so uh, um, when I make uh, kimchi, uh, you know, especially Napa cabbage, I have all this leftover uh, cabbage core and like uh, green onion trims and uh, radish, you know, peel the skin. I just didn't want to toss into compost. So I start to boiling down all that ingredients and wanted to turn into something uh, delicious. Uh, that's how the uh, uh, fish sauce <laughs> came out. And then, um, I add lots of mushrooms and kelp 
and uh, seasoned with some fermented tamari, like which is fermented soy sauce, and uh, and and add a little bit of a vinegar. It's just a um, nice way to uh, flavor if you don't want to use uh, fish sauce. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can add a little bit of fish sauce. It, it just so you taste it and see, uh, let me taste. Mm. It definitely needs a little bit of uh, soy sauce. If you don't have this, you can add a tamari or break amino, any kind of uh, uh, soy sauce. And then I'm gonna add some gochujang. And um, Aruna, are you selling your gochujang these days? Yeah. So I just came up with my uh, gochujang products, uh, start to sell at farmer's market. But we are trying to launch this uh, gochujang to uh, be available uh, in many uh, stores possible. And the, a lot of uh, uh, gochujang you buy from store, just uh, hard to like read all that ingredients. I really wanted to have that clean uh, but delicious uh, gochujang. And I use uh, organic date syrup and spicy uh, chili powder and uh, tamari to uh, <laughs> give a flavor. So it's very simple, but uh, really uh, delicious, um, very uh, flavorful. I hope you can taste someday. Yeah. <laughs> come, come to farmer's market. <laughs> um, okay. Aruna, I just wanted to ask you a couple more general kimchi questions. Yes. Are there any, are there any vegetables you think would not work as a kimchi? <laughs> I haven't think of that, <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, certain vegetable, like if the texture is, isn't right, maybe uh, um, hard to make a kimchi. I don't know anyone uh, have an idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like you can really experiment and go crazy. Um. <laughs> yeah, so, um, like last year, because of COVID, I you know couldn't do much experiment with the kimchi. But the previous year, I made all kind of kimchi using uh, rhubarb, like a rhubarb kimchi with a uh, nectarine, because you find it in that season. And I made the kimchi with the uh, um, green strawberry, wow. and you you can make kimchi with the dandelion and made the mustard kimchi. Some people told me how they uh, love that just the mustard kimchi I made. And so you that that year I uh, every month I came up with at least two different kinds of kimchi. And that was just such a fun. And that's only could, uh, you know, um, possible that uh, I was at, you know, farmer's market and I stroll around every Saturday, Sunday and see what's out there. And I think it's the best way to, uh, um, you know, get inspiration to eat healthy way to eat and you just go farmer's market and get these fresh vegetables and make something. Uh, now kimchi stew is boiling and I want to sh show you how I eat <laughs> rice. We always uh, eat so much rice. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get it. A bowl of uh, rice. You know, when I came here, um, I every Saturday I watch the Jack Pepin and uh, Yang Ken cook. And after watch that, I go out and buy all these uh, groceries and make uh, dishes. Not quite like uh, Jack Pepin, but uh, re really inspired me and. Uh, I really loved watching his show. And uh, <laughs> so I hope 
after you're watching this and, you know, this weekend, go to farmer's market and buy this beautiful root vegetable, make a kimchi and, and make a kimchi stew on a cold night. It's just perfect. This and like, um, uh, you can have a good beer or glass of wine. Actually, uh, it goes well with uh, any wine. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. So, okay, that looks good and delicious. Turn off and then garnish with a little green onion. Remove this. And this is a very uh, <laughs> typical Korean meal you can have rice and bowl of kimchi soup. Yeah, do you usually um, have a bite of soup with rice in the same? So bite? when I think I start with the rice and of course you have a different banchan, right? In Korean uh, meal, you don't, you don't only eat rice and kimchi stew, you can do. And then I eat with uh, sometimes with a uh, toasted seaweed, if you can find, and then you wrap your rice with the uh, nori and then uh, have a little soup. And then uh, if you have a little bit rice left and then I add into soup and uh, mix and eat. Oh, so delicious. Okay, Janelle, would you like to come over? <laughs> yes, <laughs> would love let me, to. Let me taste the soup. Mm, perfect. And <laughs> you have a little bit rice. Mm. Yes, I'm very hungry right now. Very, mm. very hungry. Um, so, <laughs> Runa, I know we can find your products at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere else people can easily find your stuff? Yeah, you can find at Rainbow Grocery and uh, Good Eggs. They will, uh, you know, deliver to your home and uh, other local uh, stores like uh, Preserved, Preserved in Oakland. I love okay. their store. You can find uh, everything about fermentation. Oh, my dog is begging for kimchi stew. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can say hello. Hey, Lucky. Wow. <laughs> uh, um, he's a beggar. <laughs> um. <laughs> so one of our viewers is wondering if you might be doing any cooking classes or writing a kimchi cookbook in the future? Uh, I would love to do more Korean cookings and uh, even we are thinking uh, doing some pop-up with my uh, friend YJ with the uh, gluten confraternity, doing some world kimchi tour, just using pop-up and highlighting different uh, uh, cultures using kimchi and uh, uh, flour. So um, that uh, uh, we are maybe trying to do possibly collaboration with the Daily Driver, which they are my uh, neighbor, also they uh, uh, farmer's market vendor. And I will let you know when we start to uh, world kimchi tour. <laughs> awesome. And then, um... What are some of your favorite ways to eat kimchi that are maybe a little less expected? Like I, it, I have seen uh, kimchi used on so many dishes that are not mm -hmm. Korean. Uh, how? What kind of a dish I could? Uh, could you say again? I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> like different dishes you can um, use kimchi for. Like oh, I've seen it on burgers, for example. Oh yeah. I mean, you can, of course, people use like kimchi tacos, kimchi, uh, um, you can make a falafel with the kimchi or um, uh, kimchi lakas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so many things. You can make kimchi samosas. And uh, um, my friend uh, at Besharam, she's been making uh, kimchi samosas using my kimchi. And I think what you cannot make with the kimchi. <laughs> yeah, kimchi pupusas and so. <laughs> the list goes on. 
Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Aruna, is there anything else you want to share with this audience before we let you go? Um, I hope you uh, can make uh, kimchi uh, after watching this and um, have a healthy and happy gut. <laughs> and if you have any uh, kimchi questions, please let me know and say hello uh, at Farmer's Market. You can find us at uh, Ferry Building Saturday and Sunday at Clement Street Market. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Aruna, for your time. I learned so much and I hope everyone watching that you also learned something. Thank you so much um, for joining us. Thank you for supporting local media and local food again. And I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Bye, Aruna. Thank, thank you.